Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Easy Myopia Management for Patients, Parents and Practitioners. My name is Dominic Ernst. I am the Product Manager for Myopia Management, Biometry and IOL Calculation at Hawkswright Group. I am very pleased to have this webinar today and I would like to get started with a few minor housekeeping notes. Please be aware that um, if you look at your bottom toolbar, you will see a Q&A button as well as a chat button. Um, please use the Q&A function to ask your questions um, and also uh, take note that we will be answering questions at the end of the webinar. As you may have heard when joining the webinar, this webinar will be uh, recorded such that you can review it later on on uh, our channels, as well as your partners, your customers um, that cannot be uh, attending today. <clears throat> to set the stage a little bit for, for, uh, for today, um, I uh, would like to introduce the topic. Uh, today we are talking about myopia management. Uh, in Hark's right product world, we uh, um, myopia management revolves around around our myopia management product, Lensar Myopia, which is structured into four main activities. Uh, first, obviously, this is uh, the acquisition of data, which is well known. Uh, then uh, we uh, obviously consider axial biometry as an important aspect in myopia management, where we can act, uh, compare um, biometry data to um, reference curves. Then um, certainly uh, not unimportant is still refraction measurements. Uh, and then the myopia communication aspects towards our patients and the caregivers. And uh, our focus today will be the age-matched myopia control module that is our newest and most exciting addition to the world of myopia management in Hawks Right. And to dive deep into this new topic, I am very proud to introduce our speaker today. Our speaker today is Dr. Professor Hakan Kaimak. And let me just give you a little bit of a background to him. Professor Kaimak is a very passionate professional, eye care professional with, uh, with long running experience in myopia management. As you can see here, he started his career in the, Chef, in the well known Scheffel lab um, with uh, Professor Frank Scheffel, where he was working. Uh, already 25 years ago on understanding myopia treatment in animal models, as well as already at this time, he um, started to uh, publish standard textbooks in, in the space of myopia management, such as the myopia updates that you can see here. In more recent time, he has been even increasing the activities in um, research and communicating the Im importance of myopia. And you can see Professor Kaimak is a, an extremely passionate, but also extremely experienced researcher. But not only that, he is also an experienced clinician. He is a father of a daughter, which also has myopia, which is a major a motivation for him to really dive in this topic and also himself. As you can see from the top right image, he already suffered a retinal detachment, which provides a special motivation for him to, um, to really understand and help people treat myopia, understand myopia. Professor Kaimak, 
um, started his career at the Eberhard Karls University in Tübingen, as well as in the Ruprecht Karls University in Heidelberg. Um, he, since 2010, he heads the research institute for international innovative ophthalmology surgery, and he partners with the International Vision Correction Center of the University of Heidelberg. In 2022, Professor Kaimak accepted professorship for ex experimental ophthalmology at the Saarland University, and he does chair a number of lectures and scientific congresses in many professional associations such as the American Academy of, the, of Ophthalmology and as well as the European and American Society of Cataract and Refractive Surgery. So with that, I am excited to have uh, his voice this morning specifically for us and please do enjoy the webinar that is up ahead. Thank you very much. Please, Professor Kai Mark, you can take over. Thank you very much for the really nice introduction. I would like to share my slides. Perfect. <clears throat> so, um, again, thank you very much for the possibility to talk about uh, myopia. Myopia comes from the Greek word myops, and it means pinching the eyes to get a sharp image. When the children look at distance, this is a habit of the uh, myopic children to get a, a sharp image on the retina. This is the pinhole effect. We all note that the sightedness uh, or the short sightedness cause myopia. We have a mismatch between the refractive power and the axial length of the eye. So the focal point is in front of the retina. And Johannes Kepler was the first to describe this point. This is now 400 years ago. The main question, what is very, very uh, important is this, uh, are the bad eyes born or made? This is really a mystery of myopia in ophthalmology. And these are the first animal models by Wiesel and Raviola. They showed that the visual experience of the eye is very important for the de uh, development of a normal growth. So as you can see here on the right side, does when you suture the eyelids, then the eye becomes myopic. This was the first experiment to show that the visual experience is very important. This is called the natural development of the human eye. This is the emetropization. You can see here the comparison of the refracted error distribution among newborns and six to eight year old children. The distribution of refractive errors narrows between the infancy to early childhood during the process of emetropization. That means emetropia is no coincidence. It depends on the visual signals and also of the visual experience of the eye. Then you see we have this retinal processing, the growth signals that uh, link to the eye growth of the eye. What happens when there is no visual experience like in children, when they get cataract or a macular scar or ptosis, they will develop myopic. So this is a deprivation myopia in children. And as you can see here, the distribution of the refractive error in those eyes uh, with no really good experience, uh, experience of visual quality, they get myopic. So that means that the eye control its own growth. And we learned now for many years that the eye growth, the eye control depends on sunlight, near work, if you have myopic parents, and ge genetics. And this imbalance, uh, they will end up in a myopic eye. And you can see the distribution of different um, uh, countries with myopia. That means the eye control its own growth and it's depend on your visual experience. 
So what treatment options do we have? You know, we have atropine, we have contact lenses, we have spectacle lenses. But even before you start thinking about what you should and how you should treat, the main question is, when does myopia really start? Is it enough to measure refraction or do we need axial length measurement? The answer you will find in this paper. This is the assessment of myopia progression, the question by axial length or by refraction. You see the classification of myopia progression rate in slow, moderate, and rapid. And as you can see here really clearly is that the increase in refraction underestimates the increase in axial length, and you have a better matching in older children. I show you this again. We have a discrepancy between refraction and axial length. If you classified the eye growth as slow, that means less than 0.5 diopters per year, you will find just a progression which you classified as slow in 23% of the eye. You have a progression rapid in nearly 42% of the eyes. The question is, well, how this could happen? You know that one millimeter belongs to three diopters normally. So why does the increase in refraction underestimate the increase in axial length? And here's the answer. You have a relationship between the axial length and the human lens refractive power. That means that the refraction is stable when, you, when the lens power and the cornea power is decreasing while the axial length is increasing. That means you have a balance between the axial length and the lens power. So before the onset of myopia, before the children get any subjective impairment, you see the gap in the axial length growth matters between the myopic eyes and the amyotropic eyes. That means two, three, four years before you even recognize that you are myopic, you see a difference in the growth pattern of the myopic and the amyotropic eye. That means we have a silent myopia. You didn't see it when you just look for the refraction. So I call it silent myopia. And the question or the answer is how this could happen is we have the change in lens power differs in myopic eye. That means we have a natural compensation in the amyotropic eye bet between the lens and the crows. This is normal. And you have a hypercompensation in myopic eyes. That means that it takes a little bit till you see the refraction that the child is myopic. And this is very important to know. So the change in the lens during childhood, you can see here. And if you have the myopic onset, then the lens or the eye is not compensating with the lens power. This is not possible. And then you see it in the refraction. But before you can see the refraction, you will see it in the biometry. Very, very important. So that means that the axial length, the primary biometric, is the contributor to myopia in children. That means in the myopic eye and before myopia is starting in refraction, you see it when you look for the biometric uh, parameters. And from a medical point of view, Biometry is very important, is mandatory. As you can see here, the fundus of a mild myopic eye, and you can see here that the eye is growing even in adults, and you see the effect on the retina, on the macula, and on the optic disc with increasing of the axial length. And even if you're doing an MRT, you see the difference between the amyotropic eye and the high myopic eye. And this ends up in a reduced visual acuity less than 0 0.5, 20, 40. That means in adults between the age of 20 and 64, the main reason for reduced visual acuity is myopia related. And this is very, very important. 26% is myopia related for a reduced visual acuity in adults. 
So that means we have to measure the biometry, the axial length, and which device to measure, how to measure it. You know, you have different devices um, on the market. And what we have done is that we look for uh, this, these biometers and we look for the precision of the measurements. And as you can see here is the standard deviation of the different biometers. And the best you can see here is the IOL master and the Landstar. And this standard deviation is important for the progression rate of the eyes because the standard deviation is just 0.015. That means if you want to safely detect small differences like 0.1 millimeter, you can do it after five months. In the other biometers, this is not possible. That means high axial length rows can be safely detected after only a few months with the Landstar. And this is for me very important as a practitioner. And this is the reason why I decided to do with the Landstar. So the question is myopia treatment, when to start? You can see here the growth curves of boys and girls. You see there's a difference, boys have longer eyes, and this is the emetropic curve. It's the 50th percentile, and this is uh, an emetropic eye. And when just the children pass this curve, then you will have to start with your myopia treatment again. When you're more, or if you have more axial lengths than this, in this emetropic uh, eye curves, if you pass the yellow zone, you have to start with myopia treatment. Very easy, very, very easy. Just passes the 50th percentile, you have to start with myopia treatment. This is a clear message. You don't have to look for the refraction, it's the uh, biometric values. And you will say, well, there is a difference between different countries, Caucasian and Asian eyes. Is this really the matter? Well, just have a look on this paper. You see the emetropic Caucasian mean axial length, and this is the East Asian mean axial length, and it's the same. It's the same. That means the same axial length in emetropic eyes. And it makes no difference if you are Caucasian or Asian, emetropic is emetropic, and this is the mean value. When we look for the myopia, then we have a difference. That means the different and excellent lengths you will find in the myopic eyes. I will show you this later on. So again, you have to look for the growth curves. And when you just compare the Caucasian and the Asian, then you see this is the 50th percentile. And this corresponds to the Asian, the 25th. Uh, and the 10th, and for the male is 25, it's 10th, and it's the 5th. So the emetropic eye curve is the same, but it differs in the distribution. That means a higher amount of increased axial length in Asian myopes we have because of the different environmental factors. That's very, very important to know and to keep it in mind. So we can start with your, or we can start with our myopia treatment. We just know when to start. And the question is, what does that mean? Well, we have to slow down the progression of myopia. We have slowed down the actual length growth. And it's very important just the avoidance of the high or pathological myopia. We know that we can not myopia recedes, and we will know that the eye can't shrinks back to a normal axial length, and we will not have a 100% of protection against myopia-related diseases in adulthood. But our main goal is clear. We want to slow down the axial length growth. So what happened after the next control visit after having started the treatment? Well, the question rises up. You measure. Uh, the child and you see axial length growth rate is 0 0.2 millimeters per year. Is this good or not good? Well, you will come up with question from the parents. Is the treatment successful in my child? What has the treatment done for my child? And you as a doctor, well, you know the efficacy of myopia treatment. You have them in mind. You all know that you 
uh, compare it with the placebo group, but what it means for this child. Hmm. And then you think about what is the treatment goal and how much change in the eye is still okay. And what point has the eye changed too much? Which parameter should I primarily look at to assess a therapy success, refraction or axial length? Hmm. Again, what is the treatment goal? And how should a child's eye normally develop? So just go back to the axial growth. You see here the axial length growth in children, and these are the epidemiological studies from Truckenbrot or from Tiedemann. And you see here in blue the physiological axial length growth for ametropia. And the red one is the excessive axial length growth, which ends up in myopia. So again, we have a physiological axial length growth of the ametropic eye from five years to 12 years. And we have this physiological axial length growth even in the myopic eye plus an excessive axial length growth of the myopic eye, which uh, depends on the sunlight, on near work and things like that. So it's, then it's very clear when you see those pictures, the treatment goal should be the physiological axial length growth rate. So this is how we came up with our AMMC, that's the age match myopia control. What does it mean? Well, step one, you have this physiological axial length growth rate, as you can see here. And then we have the standard deviation. This will end up in the green zone. So this is the physiological axial length growth rate. That means therapy not needed. This is normal. Then we have the yellow zone. That means we have a moderately excessive axial length growth rate. So therapy is recommended. And then what is left, the red zone, this is the highly excessive axial length growth rate. That means therapy is strongly recommended. Red zone, yellow zone, green zone. Keep it simple. This is the system for the myopia control management. And we have just implemented in the Landstar together with Hack Streit. Thank you for this again. And this is how it looks like. So AMFC means we have an individual assessment of axial length growth rate depending on age. We can support in the question of when to start. And you can answer now the question, axial length growth rate of 0.2 millimeters per year, good or not good? Well, it depends. I know it always depends. Here it's the age. With seven years, it's good. With 10 years, you are in the yellow zone. That means you have a moderate axial length growth rate. And if the child is 12 or 13, this is not good. This is a fast progressor and you have to do a therapy. Again, it depends on the age. 0 0.2 millimeters per year. You can now answer the question. So, AMMC means taking into account gender-specific difference in physiological growth pattern. You know we have a difference between boys and girls, and this is also implemented in the AMMC system for the myopia control management. And it's a simple evaluation and classification of a treatment efficacy. It's very easy and practical. So you just see here the classification of response to treatment. It just, you can see it before the therapy and during the therapy, and then you can classify it in good response, no response, low response, and you can communicate with the parents of your treatment effect. And I will show you the evaluation and the classification of the treatment efficacy. Here's an example. This is the first visit. The axial length is below the 50th percentile and you have no, or you will not do any treatment, no treatment. So after one year, you see the axial length is above the 50th percentile. And then you look for our MMC system. And you see that in the first year, you have no treatment. And what happens? You have a moderately excessive axial growth rate. So together, axial length it's above the 50th percentile, and you have a moderately excessive axial length growth rate. That means you can now, or you have to start with your 
therapy with your treatment. After one year, well, you can really judge it when you just look for the growth uh, rate curves, for the, for the, for the curves of uh, excel length after one year. But with the AMMC system, it's now very clear. After one year of treatment, you have the physiological excel length growth rate, and you see you have a good response. This is when you start here in this example with the Hoya MyoSmart classes. Example two, first year again, below 50th percentile, no treatment. After one year, above the 50th percentile, again, you are in the yellow zone. Axial length is above the 50th percentile. You have a moderately excessive axial length growth rate. You start with your treatment. And then after one year of treatment, you have this result. Well, we are looking after one year, you are still in the moderately excessive axial length growth rate. That means you have a low responder. And this has a uh, impact on your decision how to go farther with this. This was for us to say, well, we have to start with a combination treatment. And then after one year, we checked it again. After one year of combination treatment, and now, and now we hit our goal. We hit our treatment goal. We have a good response with the combination treatment. Example three. Again, below 50th percentile, no treatment. Then after one year, we're again above the 50th percentile. But when we look, we see we have a slow progression. So excel length is about the 50th percentile. And this was our treatment goal. Start of treatment when you are above the 50th percentile. And this is the reason why we start, in this case, with atropine 0.1 percent because the, the parents they wish to get atropine because they read it in the newspapers and after one year of treatment you see the effect you look for the mmc system and you have no response it's very clear no response with atropine 0.01 percent that means the axial length is above the 50th percentile you have a moderately excessive axial length growth rate. And this is, again, start of combination treatment. And we will see this in six months, the, uh, the result of our combination treatment. This is another example. After one year, again, axial length is about the 50th percentile. And you see that in the first year with no treatment, we have the moderately excessive axial length growth rate. Again, we have uh, the we are in the yellow zone. Axial length above the 50th percentile, moderately excessive axial length growth rate. So we start with our treatment. Very simple, very clear message. Then we look after one year of treatment. Oh, no response, no response to our treatment. After one year of treatment now, highly excessive axial length growth rate. So still moderately excessive axial length growth rate. So we start with the combination of treatment with atropine. And then we have the combination of treatment with the MyoSmart classes. And look what happened. We hit the treatment goal. We have a super response with our combination of atropine and with the MyoSmart classes. So that means you don't have to start with your combination you just look after six or 12 months the results of your treatment and when you hit a good response when you are in the green zone then you can leave it with your treatment if not then you do the combination example four the first visit the axial length is below the 50th percentile no treatment then after one year, we are above the 50th percentile. You know, okay, above 50th percentile, what to do? And you look for the AMMC system and you see, oh, fast progression, we're in the red zone. Okay, axial length above the 50th percentile, highly excessive axial length growth rate in the AMMC system. It's very clear now, start of treatment. After one year of treatment, you see the effect. You look for the AMMC system 
And after one year, you are in the green zone. You are a super response. That means you can keep your treatment uh, further. So again, AMMC means individual assessment of axial length growth rates depending on age. It's support in the question of when to start treatment, taking into account a gender-specific differences in physiological growth pattern, and it's a simple evaluation classification of the treatment efficacy. And we have this traffic light system for the easy understanding and comprehensive info box for the parents and for the children. Again, here's the traffic light system, very clear, red, yellow, green. And if you look for the info box, you can see here, well, we have the axial myopia indication. That's very clear. It's biometry, what matters. Then you see the evaluation of time span because it's age dependent. You see the assessment of axial length growth rate, in this case, slow progression. And here you see the legend. And you see, and this is what you can communicate with the parents, the classification of your treatment response. Now, for the first time, you have the possibility to really share your experience, to share the treatment response with the parents. And the key message, understand myopia progression at first glance, easily detect axial myopia and its severity. We have a clear therapy goal. It's easy assessment of therapy efficacy, and it's the clear communication to parents. So start with treatment according to biometric values of emetropia. This is very important. And the therapy goal is the emetropic eye growth rate. Thank you very much. I think this was the first part. Do we have any questions? Thank you very much, um, Professor Kaimak, for this very insightful presentation. Um, yes, we do have um, uh, some questions. Um, I would like to get started uh, with two questions, um, uh, which go about the time span between measurements. Mm -hmm. um, I recall that you briefly touched on this. Uh, the questions are, um, how often do you need to measure and can you measure too often? And yeah, what, what would be the recommended um, distance between measurements be? The recommendation is very clear. It's you can start really safely after six months or you just say, well, I will do it after one year. This depends also for the children and also for the parents. I do routinely after six months because I just want to know very fast the response of our, of our treatment, of my treatment. Okay. Um, and can you um, measure too often? Too often? No, if you measure too often, you will have, uh, if you do it every four weeks, I think you're... you're your curves will be more precise. So no, it's not possible. Okay, thank you. Um, when there are some, some questions about the treatment efficacy, I will can go on. Well, because we have just prepared some slides, what do you think? Yes, please. Okay. So this is just uh, the MyoSmart treatment uh, in fact, what you see is just uh, an example. Uh, when you are looking for the studies and you know all, this is the treatment duration with the MyoSmart classes in blue, the DIMS treatment group and the control group. Uh, you see the axial elongation and what you also see is this 60% inhibition of myopic eye growth. This is what you really see when you are reading the study results and the question rises up, what about the remaining 40% and what is the treatment gap and what is actually is the treatment goal? I think after the presentation, you know and we all know what is the treatment goal. But to clarify this question, we just reloaded the results of the 
study uh, by LAMP with the, the focus incorporated multiple segments with the DIMS classes. And this is first, it's important just to look for the distribution and the inclusion criteria. And you see all of them are above the 50th percentile. So these are the axial lengths at the start of the therapy with the DIM lenses. And now after 12 months, you see the distribution of all eyes. And you see that with this correction, with this treatment, you hit the treatment goal in the median. That means in the average, you hit the physiological eye growth. You are in the green zone. That means for 61% or for 70%, you are in the green zone. And this has a consequence because now after one year, you could just say, well, I can do a combination treatment for those which are in the red zone. And it's age dependent, as you see, and also the results. So we compare the younger eyes with the older eyes, and you see here also an effect. And this has a practical uh, consequence for your daily routine, I think. So what we have learned with the AMMC system, with our results, I would like to show you. These are the real life results after one year with DIMS spectacle lenses. So since uh, 2021, we have 321 children uh, where we recommended to start the MyoSmart classes. And at the end, we have 166 eyes for the analysis. And this is the distribution of our children. And you see that our children are as myopic as the Asian ones. I think they are more, more myopic uh, in our clinic. So all of them are above the 50th percentile. This is our inclusion criteria. And this is my recommendation when to start with the, uh, with the treatment. Again, when it's above the amyotropic eye growth, you have to start with your treatment. You, know, you all know now the three stage of the myopia progression with the red zone, the yellow zone, and the green zone. And this is our results in real life. Again, we just hit the physiological eye growth. We are in the median, in the average, we are in the physiological range. But we have a lot of children which are in the red zone. But this is because of our inclusion criteria. We have very long, long eyes included in our uh, real life study. This differs between the LAMP study. You see again, when we just take the inclusion criteria from the LAMP study, we have a better efficacy of our results. So what we, uh, what we now do is that we just separate it with the 98 tiers percentile and we evaluated the blue zone. And you see that we have just better effects. That means for the moderate myopia, you have a better results with your treatment. And if you look for the age and you separate the younger from the older children, you see here a clear effect, an age-depending effect of your treatment. So in the older children, you have a better response. This is what you can see with the MMC system. This is not possible when you're just reading the, the, the studies or when you're just looking for the average. Here, you can really clear see the effect of your treatment, which is dose dependent. Sometimes for the atropine, I will show you later on, and it's age dependent. And when you look for the very high myopic eyes, you see we hit in the boys or with the boys the red zone and we are in the yellow zone for the average. So that means eyes with highly increased axial lengths might benefit from combination treatment. And this is my personal recommendation, what I learned with the study results and with my own experience. So the first line therapy is for me MyoSmart because I have the longest experience with this uh, spectacles. In case of younger children, 
And when they are above the 90th percentile, I do a combination of Myosmart and now 0.025% of atropine. In the case of a therapeutic gap after six months or after one year, I do a combination. That means I look and when I am in the yellow zone or in the red zone after six months or after one year, I do a combination. When there's a desire for spectacles independence, I take multiple contact lenses with high addition. And if there is a desire for spectacle freedom, I do the auto K contact lenses. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Kaimak. Um, really impressive results, and uh, we are looking forward to um, to see the, um, the the publication once uh, it is out for the public. Um, for all of our attendees, uh, you will uh, if you follow our channels, you will be reminded once this is uh, is out there so please stay tuned um i do have quite some questions uh, professor kaimak for you mm -hmm. um so i am i am happy to uh to to note them now uh, please uh, everyone uh, who was not yet able to ask the question feel free to do so um again using the question and answer feature um so the first question would be um and i guess you briefly touched on this but maybe you can just reinforce the question um uh, you touched on the uh, not uh, that uh, the the emetropization does not depend on the on ethnicity now the question uh, follows up on the AMMC. Does uh, AMMC depend on ethnicity, ethnicity or, this, or does it only depend on gender? It mostly depends on, on gender. There is a really a small difference uh, in the ethnicity. Uh, and we have implemented this also in the AMMC system. But as you can see, and as I told, emetropic is emetropic. There are really just small differences uh, between the ethnicity. That means that the difference between boys and girls are higher than those in emetropic eyes between the Asian and the Caucasian eyes. Okay. So you just get it when you are above the 50th percentile of the Caucasian curves, then you can really start with biotherapy. That's the easiest way. Um, how long we continue with the treatment? Well, when you are in the yellow zone, uh, in, in the green zone, you can follow up it for one, two years, and then you can just, when you are, have atropine, then you can uh, just uh, try to to stop the treatment with atropine, and then you uh, look for uh, the excel length growth rate after one year. And when you are still in the uh, in the green zone, then you can leave it. So I think that's the the easiest way to to compare your your results and to decide correctly. There's a, another question regarding the reference curves. Is there any significant difference between male and female child children in uh, myopia progression? Y yes, you see in the, in the curve, there's a really a difference between the boys and the girls. Uh, in the growth rate, there is not so much difference between boys and girls uh, but in the, at the end the boys have longer eyes than girls so it's for the age it's uh age uh, or it's age it's age dependent uh, when we compare the boys and the girls uh growth rates and there's also a question does refraction impact somehow our treatment no, I really just look for the biometry. It's the easiest way. Um, the, the myopia, you can call it uh, 
the refractive myopia is look when you look for the refraction and it's form for me it's more a, a medical uh, myopia when I look for the biometry. There is an, in, an interesting question about when to get started. You were ta talking about how to identify, um, but here the question is about age. The question is, your starting age looks like eight years in the graphs. Is that what you recommend starting the measurements? Um, no, when you have a six year old child, you have to decide. Um, and when you have a very young boy or girl, I also start with the therapy or with the treatment. I don't wait for six or for eight years. So start as early as, early as it's, it's possible. And it also depends on the compliance of the children. It's much easier now um, with the spectacles uh, than with atropine. And this is a very, very clever question on Shankar Raman, um, it is necessary to continue with atropine. Uh, we have done the combination. You're really right. If you, it's one of the examples with combination with atropine, the axial length was seen. Oops, it's now it's well, you really don't know what happened if you just stop one treatment. So I continue in this case, the combination, I prefer the combination. And after one year, you can just try to let one uh, gone or just do a mono treatment. It's up to you. Now you can decide. Now you can judge after six months using the AMMC system. Um, is there a reason why the moderate area of AMMC finishes at age 14? Well, we know that the uh, that the axial length grows is going down, and you also have to look how precise you can measure. So uh, there is a really small corridor uh, for the yellow zone. So we think it's much easier just to have uh, at the end red or green. That's the reason why. Um, if I may, I would take the question from Frank Faustich, mm -hmm. um, whether the AMMC is integrated in the iSuite software. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, the, um, this is uh, the, the contribution of uh, Professor Kaimak, and as you also saw in, uh, in his slides, the AMMC method is directly integrated in the iSuite Myopia software um, from here on going forward. So you can have all this useful functionality built in directly and ready at your fingertips once you have the biometry measurements available. There's also a very Good question. What's the oldest age we can do the, this treatment? Well, we note that also in adulthood, the myopia progression continues. You can see it uh, from medical students uh, where before and after they pass their exam uh, that the, the myopia will progress. So there is no point when you can't do the treatment. So also in adulthood, I prescript the uh, MyoSmart classes. And sometimes also the atropine 0.01% uh, for those with floaters, uh, also they will not see the floaters anymore with the little bit dilated pupil. So if you have a, a myopic patient, with floaters, it just try the 0.01% of uh, atropine. What is the effect if we follow the refractive graph? Well, I don't know because I just look for the biometry. Because the, the, the refraction depends on axial length, on lens power, uh, anterior uh, 
chamber of the cornea. There are so many um, combinations. And what is really matter, or what really matters is the biometry. And it's from a medical point of view, the most important thing in myopia management, it's biometry. Um, there's a there's two questions actually from uh, from Olena. Mm -hmm. um, the first one uh, would be uh, when do you define sil when you define silent myopia without refraction changes? From what treatment do you start? Atropine. We don't have palnome lens as far mm -hmm. as I know. But then I will start with atropine. It's 0.025% because this is the first effective uh, doses uh, of atropine. Sometimes when we have uh, children, no, most of them, they have no problems with 0.025%. But if they have problems, I reduce it to 0.01%. And with the uh, addition, it's 2.5 diopters, because we know the more addition, the more uh, treatment effect you will gain. How do we balance the environmental factors, especially time outside in your work? Well, if you have children, I think you have no chance to control this. Then there's a very specific question mm -hmm. from Mary. Mm -hmm. um, do you agree that you should not treat boys for, uh, with, for instance, Bornholm disease? Why? What is what are her concerns? Maybe, maybe ah, uh, oh, there's a follow up on the question. Mm -hmm. Can you the see problem it? Problem is um, the problem is when you have uh, it's more genetic um, background of your myopia. Re you really don't know if any treatment really helps the children because when the genetic is really dominant then you have i think no chance to to do any treatment because what we are doing now is more going to the uh, visual experience with uh, the focus and it's genetic when i start with the atropine therapy i have the impression that 10% mm, we have non responder now we will see when we're doing the combination uh, if we have a better effect. But when it's genetic, I note that our colleagues in, in Rotterdam, they also have good results when they are uh, doing the treatment with genetics, but they use very high dosage of atropine. I have no experience with higher doses of atropine, no more than 0 0.05, and they use 0.5 percent okay thank you um then uh, there's another question from uh, johannes uh, i will take this um yes so the question was whether the software can also be purchased for older lens devices yes it can the myopia management software tool set including the presented ammc tool set is available for all existing LensStar devices. Um, and please get in touch with your uh, local distributor or uh, subsidiary, and they will be able to help you getting uh, up and running. Uh, I would maybe also directly take uh, this follow-up question whether the AMMC fr framework is also available to measure with the iStar. Uh, or whether it is only um, limited to the lens star. Um, the framework is available for all of our biometry devices. As a matter of fact, you can also, if you have more than one lens star, you can have a station, a myopia station, let's say, so where you can do the graphing specifically for your 
um, myopia uh, treatment um, activities. So you are not necessarily tied to a specific instrument for these kind of activities. Um, so then, if there are no more questions, um, I would like to thank our speaker again, Professor Kaimak, thank you very much for being here and for this very insightful and helpful presentation. I do hope uh, that it was uh, interesting for all of our attendees. Thank you for staying with us. Um, please do follow us on LinkedIn as well as YouTube. You will be seeing that in the coming few months, we will be posting in regards to this topic, to myopia management with, uh, with Hawksright uh, devices and software. So stay tuned and um, thank you very much. See you soon. Thank you, bye. Goodbye everyone.